Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are on to week two of our AE501 journey. So let's just jump right in and see where we're headed this week. So here is our roadmap. So if you remember last week in week one, we got started and talked a lot about linear algebra, things like matrices, um, eigenvalues, eigenvectors. And now let's turn around and see if we can make a uh, good use of that knowledge by jumping into one of, this is one of my favorite topics in fact, and this is actually gonna be a two week discussion. So we're gonna start our journey into ordinary differential equations, which is gonna take up, um, like I said, two weeks. And a lot of the ideas that we see during our discussion of ordinary differential equations this is going to extend it to other concepts like uh, partial differential equations and optimization down the road when we uh, get further into the class. So again, this is a nice sort of gateway topic into some higher level discussions we'll have later on. So again, here's the roadmap. Like I said, we're watching um, the roadmap discussion right now. And then... I've got an introductory video, it's just a quick half hour video discussing just what is an ordinary differential equation, where do we see it in engineering and science, um, what types of problems might you be able to solve with ordinary differential equations, etc, etc. Once we have the uh, rough idea of what an ordinary differential equation is, we're going to need a couple of other weird sort of nuanced mathematical concepts that are going to come back later. So one of them is this idea of a forward quadrant inverse tangent. So um, again, this is just a quick little video discussing this idea that uh, a lot of times people don't give enough credit to. People think that you can just use an a tan function, but there's actually an a tan 2 function in a lot of languages, which give you a four quadrant inverse tangent, which we are going to need that kind of information um, down the road. So this here talks about what is a four quadrant inverse tangent and how is that different than a normal inverse tangent. The other idea that we want to talk about is uh, complex numbers. So now when you have a square root of negative one showing up in a number, right, that's the imaginary number that gives you now an imaginary component of a number. And instead of just being on a real line, you now have a real imaginary plane. So that's what this discussion is. It's about complex numbers, complex variables, and complex functions. Um, this video in its entirety is about, you know, a little under a, an hour long, but there's a couple of timestamps that I put out in the uh, message about the modules this week. So you can actually skip these timestamps here. So it's uh, the, the reason why is the information that's contained in this timestamps that's interesting, but it's not exactly related to um, our AE501 ordinary differential equation journey. So feel free to skip this and only make this about a half hour video. There's a similar discussion now when we come into what's going to be called the Laplace transform. So the idea here is when we go ahead and define ordinary differential equations, you're going to see that these are equations that involve typically time derivatives of functions. And a lot of times we have to employ some of uh, kind of advanced techniques to solve these differential equations. One way we can do this is what, what's called the Laplace transform. And this is gonna allow us to turn an ordinary differential equation into an algebraic equation. And again, this is gonna make a lot more sense once you watch this video. The Laplace transform is actually a pretty um, generic mathematical idea and applies to a lot of functions, not just differential equations. So that being said, this video, again, I kind of got a little overzealous and um, when I originally made this video and it's almost two hours long showing how to do the Laplace transform of a lot of different types of functions. Well, we only need a small class of those functions. So actually, again, skip a few timestamps and this should only be about an hour long discussion. And again, the lecture notes might be an easy way to help skim around and see which parts are relevant for the class and which ones aren't. But again, I put explicit timestamps here. You can skip all of this stuff in the middle. So you only need to really look at about an hour's worth of contents here to get the idea of the Laplace transform down. Now, while we're talking about Laplace transforms, one of the things that you might be tempted to do is once you have a handle on this Laplace transform, one way that we can get information out of the system or at least understand how this differential equation is going to behave is we can try to ask what is the final value uh, of some of the systems like if you just input a constant what kind of constant is going to come out at the end of the day now again i just got a little bit too excited and uh there's a video here that i made called the final value theorem which is a technique that is going to allow you to answer some of these questions but really this is completely optional if you end up taking um the controls class ae 511 with me later we will talk about this a lot more but i just wanted to throw this in right now if you are a controls person or if you're interested in it feel free to take this little side detour and see what can you actually do um, at this point once you've defined the, the laplace transform you could go ahead and take and apply the final value theorem here if you want to see how the system behaves um, near at, at t equals infinity 
Okay, but with that being said, um, the next thing we need to discuss, once you get this into the Laplace transform um, uh, format, we are going to need to understand how to solve basically polynomials. So again, this is a, a very, very simple topic here, a 10 minute discussion on how to find roots of a polynomial, right? You find the values of the independent variable that make the polynomial equal to zero. That's the roots, right? So again, I've got a 10 minute video showing you how to do that in MATLAB, Mathematica, and, and just for giggles, how to do it on an old school graphing calculator. I had one of these in my drawer and I thought it might just be fun to, uh, to break that out and show how you could do that here as well. But this video, 10 minutes on just how to find roots in using various numerical techniques. The reason we need to find the roots is because that's going to allow us to inform what type of partial fraction expansion or decomposition can we apply to a given um, uh, complex expression. So again, uh, I don't think I want to talk too much about this. I think it should hopefully make sense what we're doing here and why this matters in the context of this larger um, Laplace transform discussion inside of ordinary differential equations. So I'll let you watch this video and uh, hopefully this will make sense how to perform this. The reason we want to perform this partial fraction expansion is going to allow us to then apply the inverse Laplace transform. So again, this is another just quick discussion which is going to show you how to perform the inverse Laplace transform. So overall, what we're gunning for with week two, this all of this content here, it's basically how to model a system as an ordinary differential equation and then how to solve it using what's called the Laplace technique. Okay, so that's all we're looking at week two as a small little preview into week three. Next week, we will continue our discussion on ordinary differential equations, but we will look at different ways to solve them. While we're looking at enduring week two is just the Laplace technique. So with that being said, um, why don't we jump over to the homework and see how are we going to reinforce some of these ideas? All right, so here we are with homework number two. Now, the first thing I want to mention with homework two right off the bat, this is the only assignment all quarter where the due date is non-standard in the sense that this is actually due a little over two weeks from when it's assigned. The reason why is because, like we said earlier, in fact, we come back to the, um, whoops, sorry, uh, this file, right, where we're looking at our roadmap, we said our discussion in ordinary differential equations is two weeks long, so we're only able to cover the discussion on the Laplace transform this week. Next week, we are going to look at things like um, homogeneous and non-homogeneous linear ordinary differential equations and techniques on how to solve them. So some of the discussion in this homework, we actually don't have the ammunition to attack yet. That being said, um, let's look at what we could do right now um, and what we're going to have to wait for two weeks until we have the, uh, the, the foundation in place to tackle it. So the first one is something that I think you can tackle right away. So this one, it's a little abstract. Let's take a look at it. It's got a part A, B, and C, and they're not necessarily all tightly coupled. Um, the first one, I just want you to show that you can write cosine and sine using um, an Euler expression, right? Where you have e to the complex number theta, et cetera, et cetera. So again, this one I think is going to make a lot more sense once you watch the videos on complex numbers. Um, now, part B is where this is actually interesting. This actually has some insight uh, into the behavior of solutions of ordinary differential equations. So I want us to consider a function that looks like this. It's a function of t. t is the independent variable. You can consider that time if you want. It doesn't matter, right? The function is e to the st, okay? So now I think everyone will understand if, if s is like 1 or 2 or just some positive real number, right? You have e to the positive number t. That just looks like an exploding exponential, right? Similarly, if s was just a negative real number, if you had like e to the minus 5t, I think everyone will understand if you plot that out, that just looks like a decaying exponential, right? That goes, it starts at some number and then decays rapidly to zero. Now, what if S is not just real? What if it has complex components to it as well, right? S is a complex number. So now I'm just asking people, what happens to this function? How does it behave as the value of S moves around the real imaginary plane, right? So just ask yourself, well, what if it was purely real? What if it was purely imaginary? What if it's a combination of real and imaginary? How does that affect what the behavior of this e to the st function does, okay? So um, I'll let everyone tackle this a little bit. This might be one that might be uh, fun to talk about in office hours. We will come back to this. This is going to, like I said, lead into some insights into the fundamental solutions of ordinary differential equations.
Okay, and then problem C is uh, really, it's just doing a Laplace transform by hand. And again, I think once you watch the Laplace transform video, in fact, I think I even go through an example of explicitly how to do one of these. So watch the video and just kind of pair it back what it is, make sure you understand all the steps. And just Laplace transform a sine and a cosine um, function. So that's what problem one is. Okay, problem two, this is one where I think we might be able to tackle some of this now and we might need to wait uh, and punt until we have more ammunition to do some of the rest. So all I'm asking for right here is let's say you have some ordinary differential equation. It looks like this. It has some initial conditions. And now part A, um, we're going to have to wait <laughs> because this is uh, something we're going to talk about next week. Okay. Um, well, uh, yeah, I, I actually, I guess this whole problem might be better wait uh, to wait until next week. Problem three is very, very similar. It looks like the same differential equation as problem two, except now we're going to introduce a forcing function on the right hand side. So now this is a, you can almost think about this is a system which has an input of two sine of three T. That's, that's kind of the physical representation of what this means. Okay, and again, what we're going to have to do on part A, we're going to have to wait until we discuss traditional differential equation techniques to solve this problem next week, okay? But we can do part B right away. That's what we're talking about this week is the Laplace method. So go ahead and apply the Laplace technique that we just talked about, the Laplace transform, the partial fraction decomposition, the inverse Laplace transform. That will allow you to solve this right now using the Laplace technique. So you can do part B. Part C and D are a little bit, uh, again, we might need to wait. So next week we will talk a little bit about Simulink, which is a numerical tool that's attached with MATLAB that's going to allow us to numerically solve ordinary differential equations. So C and D, again, you might have to wait a little bit. Um, maybe what I should mention right now while we're talking about waiting, I would not wait on everything. I would recommend doing as much as possible right now because next week there still will be a homework three coming out that will be due at the same time as homework two. So unfortunately, there are still two homework assignments. They're both going to be due on the same date, but well, I'm just giving you a little bit more time on homework two because of these problems that we've got where we just can't cover enough of ordinary differential equations all at once to tackle all these problems. Okay, well, that being said, let's look at problem four. Problem four is also in a similar situation where we're going to do part of it now and then we're probably going to have to wait and to do other parts of it later. So this is going to come back to your old days from statics and dynamics class where you're modeling and drawing free body diagrams and trying to come up with equations and motions of, you know, uh, quasi simple quasi complex system. So in this situation, I've got this system where there's a there's a pulley right here. The center of the pulley is attached to the ceiling uh, that it's fixed through a spring. There's a mass on the end of this pulley. So as you can probably imagine, as you introduce some motion here, like let's say you pull down on this this mass little m and let it go. This whole thing is going to start bobbing up and down as well as rotating the pulley. So there's a fair amount of dynamics going on with this system. But at the end of the day, if you think about this thing long enough, it's actually a one degree of freedom system, right? Even though there's a angle theta of the wheel that might be interesting, and there's a distance y, which is the distance where the pulley pin moves up and down, and there's also a distance x, which is the position of the mass little m as it moves up and down, all these things theta, y, and x, they're not all independent of one another. We're going to assume there's no slipping or anything like that. So there are relationships between theta, y, and x, which basically fix two of them with respect to the third, making this basically just a one-dimensional or one degree of freedom system. Okay. So all I'm asking for here is in part A and B is basically going ahead and deriving those equations of motion uh, for this system. So you're basically just applying Newton's second law, right? I'm going to ask you to basically draw free body diagrams of this system and basically, uh, yeah, apply the same techniques you probably did in statics and dynamics and apply F equals mass times acceleration, right? Which is our simplified version of Newton's second law. Just apply it to this simple system and you should be able to, if you go work through some of these hints, right? You should be able to get, basically, you should end up with here a second order nonlinear differential equation. So you can do that right now. And in fact, you can also probably do part C. You can probably explain why the system that you obtained here in part B, that's going to, I make the claim that it is a nonlinear ordinary differential equation, not a linear ordinary differential equation. And I'm, I'm asking you to just explain why is that the case. 
But then again, part D, we might need to talk a little bit until about Simulink next week in order to do part D. Um, with part E, what I like to do is um, earlier we were making the assumption that this spring up here is nonlinear, right? It's it's its behavior is governed by this equation, right? It's the spring force is some spring constant times L cubed, which is the deflection of the spring, right? So this is a nonlinear spring. What happens if we make this spring linear, right? So if it's linear, what ends up happening is I make now the claim is the system should become a linear second order or second order ordinary differential equation. And now you could go ahead and solve this. You could do part F right now using the Laplace technique. Um, and so you should be able to do this. And then again, part G and H, you might have to wait until we have discussions on Simulink so that we can compare your analytical result you get here in part F with some of the numerical results that Simulink are going to spit out at you. So again, um, that's the game plan for this week. Like I said, homework two is a little bit odd. Please do as much of this as you can so that when homework three comes out next week, you won't have two complete homework assignments on your plate. You'll basically have, I don't know, one and a third, <laughs> hopefully, homework assignments that you'll have to deal with uh, next week. Um, okay, so with that being said, I think that's our roadmap for week two. Uh, let me know how things go. Otherwise, I'll look forward to talking with everyone over email or at office hours. All right, talk to you later. Bye.